Hey, it's Billy Corinne here with Witchy Mamas, and I am so excited to welcome you to the first ever virtual summer retreat. I'm thrilled to have you here, and we have a lineup of some amazing guests. So sit back, relax. We're going to kick off a little bit, going to introduce you to Witchy Mamas, um, introduce you to our upcoming guests today, and we're just going to have a really great time. So I'm Billy Corinne. I started Witchy Mamas because there wasn't enough resources for pagan families, um, for children. Um, you know, there are some great resources out there, but there's just not enough. Um, and as this, this um, world of like modern paganism continues to grow, um, I am really hoping to offer you some great tools, tips, tricks. It's really all about keeping things simple and practicing modern paganism. And uh, Witchy Mama is, you know, is about simplicity at its core. Um, I'm a mom. I have six kids. Uh, I'm a single mom, six kids. You know, we homeschool. I work from home. So if something isn't simple enough, it's never going to happen in my household. Um, you know, everything from meditation to simple magical practices to celebrating the Sabbaths. I definitely try to keep things as simple as possible. Now, don't get me wrong. Sometimes, you know, we, we definitely get a little more um, intricate in our, our rituals, etc. But as a whole, I really try to keep things simple. Um, you know, it's, it's about finding ways, you know, to, to just live your life and incorporate a little bit of magic every day. Uh, things like meditation really help me. And, you know, even when my, my youngest was about two, trying to get out of bed without waking him, you know, was always a challenge. And I like to start my day with meditation. So sitting down to meditate within a few minutes, I hear his little feet and he crawls into my lap. Now, at the time, he was content to, to just nurse while I, I meditated. Um, so it worked out okay. Um, but now he's four, so it's a little bit easier to, to get some, some quiet time first thing in the morning. And, you know, but it's, we really just need to try to fit in these little bits when we can. Uh, step outside, barefoot, you know, just, just feel the earth beneath us. It really helps ground us um, to greet Mama Moon at night. That's something that... Um, all my kids, all my kids, you know, love Mama Moon. And it was a ritual forever to just, you know, go out um, before bed, find Mama Moon and, you know, just, just sit under her light for a little bit. Um, so I'd love to hear from you. What are some things that you do in your everyday life um, to bring a little magic, to honor nature, to honor the gods, what, you know, what magical practices do you do? Do your, does your family do? Um, you know, witchy mamas is, is really about the whole family. I think the, you know, the, the mother stereo, the stereotype, the mother archetype is really about nurturing and, you know, taking care of, of everyone. And so that's who I am. Like I am the, the only caregiver in my house and, um, you know, all the, all the responsibilities fall on me. So, um, when I created Witchy Mamas, um, I, I was toying with several ideas, um, for names and I settled on Witchy Mamas just because like that really, really encompassed me and, um, I'm a little bit selfish here with Witchy Mamas in that I'm creating this website um, and offering services and products and tools and tips and tricks and all these things. These are the things that I want and need in my life. And I'm really hoping that it benefits you as well. So this is the website, Witchy Mamas, um, Practical Living for the Modern Family. So how do we take those pagan gods, those pagan rituals of the past and really um, embrace them in our modern life? And how do we make them practical today? What does that look like? And so that that's where we spend a lot of our time. I've always loved this quote. 
the first time I called myself a witch was the most magical moment of my life. I remember reading Drawing Down the Moon in high school, and that book was was just life changing. Um, and I very much do remember the first time I called myself a witch. I was probably 15 years old. Um, I'm sure I was 15 years old. And it was just that moment of really embracing like who I really was um, to set aside anybody's um, ideas of who I am or who I should be and and really just getting down to well who who am I though um and a little bit about me like I fell away from the craft for years and which is a common a story you know you will hear and that's like with any child in in any you know upbringing you tend to fall away from um you know the things that you were interested in as a child, um, young adult, but um, after a, a divorce um, of a, a, a bad relationship that was abusive, um, it really put me in a place of like, well, who am I? Like, I wasn't allowed to be myself. I wasn't allowed to to really do a lot of like living. And so I found myself in this place of trying to just rediscover who I was. And I was brought back to witchcraft and paganism. And I remember like, this was about four years ago and I bought my first book. Um, and it was a book that I owned back in high school or, you know, in my early twenties. And it was, um, and so when I, I got that book and I read it and it just, it really, really triggered a lot of things inside me and made me kind of go back to, you know, who I was and, and I got excited and, you know, I was really looking forward to, to embracing the real me again and really enjoying life. Um, you know, enjoying life was not something I'd done for a while. And, um, it, it took a little time for me to say, I am a witch again. It, it did. It, it took a, a while. And um, one of the things I did, too, uh, about two years ago, um, so I guess really it's it's only been about two years um, since, since I started, uh, you know, deciding, yes, I am a witch. But I still don't think that I was I was telling people that or or I was very like open about it. Um, like my closest friends and, you know, family, like, you know, they're all supportive and understanding and, you know, I have a great group, but there was still this part of me that was like reluctant to, to be open about it. I still live in, you know, a smallish conservative town. Um, about six months ago, um, I got a new tattoo and it's, um, it's pentacle on, um, the back of my neck. And I, I wanted a tattoo there. I didn't know what I wanted. One of my good friends is a tattoo artist. She does amazing work. And we were playing with some ideas and she was like, well, what about this? It, and it was, you know, a pentacle. And I was like, it, I got excited because like, I knew I wanted it, but I was, I was still like so nervous of, you know, uh, coming out of the broom closet to say, and, um, but like her excitement about it made me more excited. And so anyway, um, I got this beautiful tattoo and it is gorgeous. And um, at that point I have, so I've had this, um, like I said, about six months now and I've had nothing but compliments on it, even from people that uh, I'm sure don't necessarily approve of my lifestyle. Um, but there's something just so empowering about having this, this statement to the world, you know, that, that really shows who I am. And it was after that tattoo specifically about six months ago that I really, um, I don't want to say fully ready to embrace this life because I, I, I am, I've, I've been back for a while, but just something about having like that public declaration, that, that statement that goes with me everywhere that, um, 
kind of lets people know who I am. It just, it felt good to, to acknowledge that part of me in that way. And so, you know, I am a witchy mama and <laughs> I am here to stay. So if we go down on the website, um, you'll see here. So we've got the information about the virtual retreats, which uh, we plan to do this um, at least four times a year, every quarter with the seasons. I think it'll be a blast. We've got some really fun things lined up. Um, but if you look to your left, you'll see the five ways to practice magic every day. And if you put in your name and email address, you're going to get that guide instantly. And it's super, super short, super simple exercises that you can do on your own with your kids. They're all kid friendly and they're all super simple. Um, really none of them really require tools. Um, you know, pen and paper, um, and some of them, you know, you have the option of adding as many things as you want, like incense, candles, uh, statues, etc. but nothing really requires, nothing requires anything special. And then of course you can listen to the latest podcast episodes. So the last couple of years, the podcast has been a little hit and miss. Um, but we, we have things, uh, set, scheduled, ready to go now. So we're going to really be launching back into that podcast and having content for you every week. And, um, you know, we, we will be covering a lot of beginner stuff. We will be covering, um, stuff specifically for, for children, uh, stuff for the family, stuff for, you know, um, moms, dads, couples, you know, we're, we're, we're gonna, we're going to cover everything that relates to us as witches and living a magical lifestyle. And obviously that basically encompasses all of life. Um, I know I can't, you know, separate my witchy side from, you know, everyday life. It's, it's all so intertwined. And so, um, we just really want to weave that in, you know, with everyday life. So even if a topic is not necessarily magical, um, it's still something that might affect us or be important to us. So we're definitely going to be covering those things. Um, so, and look at, this is interesting. This slide is slightly, um, crooked here but we're just gonna, we're gonna go with it. So I thought it would be super fun to pull a card this morning. So these are the crystal ally cards, um, which I've been using for over 20 years. Um, and like, as far as Oracle cards go, they're really the only thing that I use and they're fantastic. Um, so today we drew a uh, Seraphinite and it's all about healing, which I thought was kind of it, definitely the perfect card. Um, like, cause as a whole, as a, a country right now, as a world, you know, just, just as humans, like we are in need of healing. And I'm going to read to you a little bit about, um, from the book that, that came with this and, um, Let's talk about this a little bit. So when Seraphinite appears in your cards, you can be sure that a time of healing is upon you. Healing is the process of bringing aspects of ourself that are out of, out of balance back into balance again. Most imbalance is caused by belief in the illusion of separation from divine love. Seraphinite has come to remind you that you are loved and that any imbalance you have created can be healed by accepting that love into your life again. Before we can step fully into the age of light, we must integrate all of the experiences that reside within our physical body. When we have done this, we can fully experience the clarity of our light body being anchored on the earth plane. Seraphonite's frequency aids in the rapid processing, healing, and integration of cellular memories and information, creating clarity in our bodies, emotions, and minds. By accepting the healing of Seraphonite that Seraphonite offers, you can once again experience the beauty of connection to the divine source of all creation. Um, the book also gives us an affirmation, which says, I honor my body as a vehicle for light. 
Um, so as a whole, we're all, we're all here. Um, and we're all in a place of healing. Now, um, we all know that healing can be painful and we've definitely seen, we have seen that this year. Um, like 2020 has been a time of, of really reexamining everything, reexamining, reexamining our society, um, you know, our culture, all of these things that, that we accepted as, you know, what life is and what life, you know, should be. Um, and now we're all seeing that, you know, that that's not the case. And so as our worlds have been turned upside down, we're in this place of healing. Um, we're all in need of healing on some level, be it emotional, physical, or spiritual. Um, let's see, I'm reading from the book again now. The frequency of a uh, seraphonite reveals that the underlying causes of imbalance, allowing us to rectify them before they manifest as physical disease. Its ability to connect us to the highest realms of the spirit while bringing that energy into the physical body makes us a really important healing ally. And so this would be a great, a great stone, a great crystal to work with. Um, if you work with crystals, if you're new to crystals, yeah, because it's all about just healing. Um, it's good for the entire body. It's good for all your chakras. Just keeping the stone on you would be would be super beneficial. Um, one of the things that I like to do, especially with a new crystal, after, after you've cleansed it, um, is, is to meditate with it. There are, I mean, uh, crystals can affect us in different ways. And, um, you know, somebody might have this certain experience with this crystal, but I, you know, might have a very different experience. Um, so the stone is going to, be beneficial and once you've um, have the stone once you have um, cleansed it to meditate with it so you know outside of possible you sitting on the bare ground um, crystal in your hands and and just sit with it um, you know see how it affects you see the things that come up and as far as healing goes um, this is really going to show you some aspects of yourself that maybe you haven't healed, um, maybe things you've repressed and um, give you the opportunity to kind of look at those. So I think this is a really beautiful card to have pulled today um, just because we're, we're all, I mean, we're always in need of some sort of healing, but as a, as a collective right now, we are all in desperate need of this healing and in doing this work. And you're going to see, um, when we talk to Priya Kali later about, um, Mars retrograde, you, I feel like this energy is just, is, is such a big part of that. Um, so I, this was just a beautiful card to pull. So this is my nightstand. These are the books on my nightstand. And I actually, there, there's two more that I totally forgot to, to include in that list. So, um, I thought it would be fun to just kind of look at these and I want to know what you're reading, what books are on your nightstand or, um, you know, what, what are you currently reading? And loving what are you reading and not loving you know share with me some of your favorite books I'm always looking for good books um, these are great um, so witchery by Juliet uh, Diaz I really really enjoy it is um, a beginner's guide you know how how do we get started with witchcraft and um, I love beginners books as well as, as things that are more advanced just because I really love, like I said, I love simplicity and you're not going to get any simpler than books written for beginners. And there's always little bits that, um, are new to me, you know, and, um, I'm just, I'm just flipping through, through the book right now. I haven't read this book, um, in full, um, I have just kind of been flipping through it and looking at um, different things. But no matter, um, you know, if it's a beginner's book or not, like there's always something fun to find. And 
So this book starts with root work, the craft unveiled, practical magic, like connecting with your inner witch and um, creating an altar. And then we have the witch's garden of herbal magic and then practice responsibly. So there is so many good things in this book. Um, like I said, it's definitely a beginner's book, but there's lots of visualizations. There is, um, you know, grounding, some meditation, some simple spells, just, just a variety of things. And her writing style is fantastic. And I really think you'd benefit from this book. Um, the Grimoire Journal is new. This just came out, um, I want to say within the last couple of weeks. But my that concept of time right now is kind of irrelevant. So it is definitely a newer book, though. And it is a journal. And as you go through, um, there's information, but then there's lots of places to write. So there are, let's see, there's meditations, there's simple spells. It gives you an opportunity. So like this section is reflect on rituals. So um, there's some information on like what daily rituals are like. And, you know, we're talking about um, things like daily yoga or meditation or, you know, a bath you might take every full moon. Um, so we're not talking about, you know, like, like seasonal rituals or um, regular rituals, but more like everyday kind of practices. But, and, you know, she walks you through it a little bit and then um, gives you space to record your own thoughts. So this is super fun. Again, definitely more for a beginner. <clears throat> Excuse me. And... Sorry, I got caught up reading. Um, <laughs> so it's a great book. You know, I, like I said, I love just buying up all the books and, you know, always taking away something from it. There's, there's some recipes in here. Um, so it, it's definitely a lot of fun. And I think um, everybody can uh, benefit from this one. So Cinder is a young adult novel. And, um, I'm actually reading, well, my, my, my 17 year old daughter already finished the series and I'm supposed to be, I was supposed to be reading along with her. I've read like one chapter of this book. So I love it so far. She loves it. Um, I have a couple kids who read this series and, and absolutely love it. So it is, um, let's see. Okay. Even in the future, the story begins with once upon a time. Humans and androids crowd the streets of New Beijing. A deadly plague ravages the population. From space, a ruthless lunar people watch, waiting to make their move. No one knows that Earth's fate hinges on one girl. 16-year-old Cinder, a gifted mechanic, is a cyborg. She's a second-class citizen with a mysterious past and is... Um, Okay. Um, so anyway, we're going to like, this book is a lot of fun. Um, it's a, definitely a fun take on, um, some of those tells. So definitely a, a different take on Cinderella for sure. And then you've got the, the whole lunar chronicle series. So Cinder, Scarlet, Crest, and Winter. Um, so I've heard great things about this by Marissa Meyer. Can't wait to dig in a little bit more. So not, not so much, you know, witchy read, but a fun read that I think everybody will enjoy. Um, the next one is Tarot for Self-Care. And let me tell you, I absolutely love this book. So, um, obviously, like, the you know, the big focus is on self-care. And, you know, how do we bring tarot into that? So there are... Let's see. There's um, a spread for each card. And so let me pick one. Okay, so let's do justice. So it has the card. It gives us the interpretation, um, gives us the reversed uh, interpretation, and then it gives us some self-care card activities. So for like mind, Okay, so it says mind. Find balance mentally by taking time alone to recharge if you're feeling depleted or by visiting an art exhibit if you're feeling uninspired. 
If you're struggling with your mental health, schedule an appointment with a therapist. Remember, asking for help when you need it is a sign of bravery, not weakness. And then it goes on to tell us um, activities for body and spirit. Um, so body for, for justice would be to center your energy and promote balance in your body by making yoga or Pilates a part of your morning routine. And then with spirit, align your energy by honoring spirit, the fifth magical element. Make sure you're living in honesty and holding yourself accountable for any missteps you take. If you have apologies or amends to make, now is a great time to do so. So um, there's lots of fun things in here. So aside from just each card with its interpretation and, and activities, um, we go through other forms of self-care. So chapter one is set the stage methods for manis manifesting a magical mood. So it really talks about um, like self care. Um, how do we, how do we create an environment um, that is going to help us help make our self care a whole lot easier. Chapter two is find the divine in the details, a crash course of interpreting tarot. Chapter three is taking up space, exploring tarot spreads. Chapter four is uh, the major arcana interpreted. Chapter five is the minor arcana. And then um, the part three of the book is about optimizing your self-care. So we've got open your third eye, harnessing the power of intuition, get your sparkle on, enhancing tarot readings with crystals, dive deep using tarot for self-exploration, own your potential, embracing your personal power tarot card. And then the last chapter is what's next? Further tarot lessons for everyday self-care. So this is a fantastic book. Whether you're new to the tarot, like you could 100% pick up this book if you've never read tarot. It would be a great way to start. Um, but it also, if, if you have been using tarot for a while, this book is going to give you something new. And I highly recommend it. So... Um, yeah, definitely get that one. And so we've got the five minute magic for modern Wiccans. And I don't consider myself Wiccan, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to read <laughs> uh, Wiccan books. And again, you know, to keep with this uh, simplicity, the five minute magic, heck yeah. So there are tons of recipes, simple rituals, simple spells, like a ton of things. Um, here's a spell to quell your anxiety. A waning moon contentment ritual. Um, let's see. Recipes for baths, bath soaks. Um, let's see. A morning meditation. Luck by the cup. So um, there's a ton of fun things in this book. Okay, so, and I apologize. I'm not sure what happened with these pictures. Um, so the one at the top is the Junior Witches Handbook, A Kid's Guide to White Magic Spells and Rituals. So this just arrived. Um, I have not read it yet. Um, I've, I have flipped through it like I'm doing now. Um, and it's, let's see. Um, it's got a lot of information, um, you know, things for setting up your own altar, friend, friendships. So creating friendships, healing friendships, empowering friendships, fulfillment. Again, all of these are creating, healing, empowering. So we've got friendship, fulfillment, and family. Um, so, I mean, it looks like a fun book, um, you know, for like the, the tween age, I'd say like eight to 12. Um, and it's the illustrations are beautiful. Um, there's like, there's a forgiveness spell in here, a cleansing ritual. Um, so, you know, I think this could be a lot of fun. Um, I included it just because it's currently sitting on my nightstand, even though I haven't really looked at it yet. And then the last one is the ethical slut. Again, not a witchy book, um, but it's one that I'm reading. Um, and it's been fantastic. So 
let's see, this is the 20th anniversary edition of the classic guide to polyamory, open relationships, and finding freedom in sex and love. So um, this is a topic that's been important to me. Um, you know, I mentioned being in, you know, a terrible marriage and such. And um, so uh, I've spent... I have been spending a lot of time, you know, the past couple of years kind of um, healing, um, dealing with myself and, and figuring out, you know, what is it um, to have a healthy relationship? What does that look like? And one of the things that I um, am really feeling is like, I don't, I don't think that I want a monogamous relationship. Like, I'm feeling like, at least, at least in this point in my life, like, I'm, I'm not a fan of monogamy. And, but with that, with trying to um, embrace a different lifestyle like that, it, it is a challenge because, you know, monogamy is so ingrained in our society and there's a lot of things to, to examine. And so I, this book has been extremely helpful in that. Um, to kind of unlearn some of these things, to um, understand, know, accept that it's okay to love more than one person, to be romantic with more than one person, um, and that doesn't lessen the value of any of the relationships. And so it, the book has been great. Um, and even if, you know, you don't, even if you're not polyamorous, um, I think we all have a lot to learn uh, from the ethical slit and just understanding that like not everybody loves the way you do and to understand and just because something looks a little bit different um, that doesn't make it wrong and you know we've all got enough love to go around <laughs> okay so let's talk a little bit about um, let uh our guest for today so um up first we have jennifer hartman and we're going to be discussing raising pagan kids with norse traditions um so this is fantastic and this will uh go live at 1 15 central time um all times mentioned are going to be central and so this was we we had a really great conversation and um I, I know you're you're really gonna love uh Jennifer here. And um okay. And then we have Danielle Park up next from uh let's see. We're, we're I'm I'm so sorry. I'm trying to read and talk at the same time. It's clearly not working. So Danielle Park is from Oak Moon Tarot. And we're discussing using tarot with children. And it was a fantastic conversation. And she gives us some tips on how we can easily use tarot cards with children, even if we don't read tarot cards ourselves. So you'll definitely want to tune in for that. And then we have Elizabeth. And her and her son are going to do a meditation. And she's going to talk about uh, meditation with children. And then we have Priya up at 315. Um, so each of these sessions, you're going to have about 15 minutes between um, sessions, and that'll give you time to take a break, go get your favorite drink or snack. Um, some of them go back to back with their, if they're shorter. So I apologize. Um, let's see. So Jennifer was at 115. Danielle is at 215. Um, and then Elizabeth is at 245. So these will go quickly. They're shorter. And then Priya will be at 315. And we're going to dive deep into Mars retrograde. So you really don't want to miss this one. Um, let's, we're just going to discuss what's coming up in the next few months, what that looks like now, what it'll look like by the end of the year. So this is definitely an important one. And then I'm super excited about our musical guest, Navy Blue. She'll, uh, let's see, at 415, you can catch... Her music, um, she's done a bunch of covers from some songs, um, and she is part of a band, which I, I heard the band and loved one of the songs and was able to reach out to her and get her as our guest for today. So super, super talented young musician. You'll definitely want to check her out. 
Um, she, she does some older songs. She does some newer songs. Um, so it'll be fun for the whole family. And then we have Andrea Stein. Um, and we're going to discuss children's books. So um, Andrea owns her own publishing company. She has uh, published a book of her own. And she's just going to review some of the best um, witchy type books for children that are not necessarily meant to be witchy. Uh, but boy, she has got some gems. And then at 545, we have Jane Kyle, UFO Jane, and we're going to talk UFOs, past, present, future. We're going to talk a little bit about Skinwalker Ranch, um, Ouija boards, um, all the good stuff. So definitely check her out. Um, this is going to be a fun one. And she's going to give us some practical tips to kind of getting started in like researching UFOs or just kind of getting caught up on the current news because boy, it's a big world out there. And then at 7.15, we're going to discuss Sabbaths with Courtney and um, how her family celebrates, how we incorporate uh, magic into everyday life, all that good stuff. So this is a fantastic segment you'll definitely want to, to check out. And then at 8.15, I sit down with Cecily and we're going to talk about tarot for healing and creativity. And I I mean, I, I'm going to say this about everybody. It's a fantastic segment. You don't want to miss it. <laughs> um, so this was fun. This was definitely um, eye-opening for some uses of tarot that I hadn't previously used tarot for. Um, so the, and she offers, um, she's from the typewriter tarot, and she has several, several great resources as well um, that I'm excited about. And then at 9.15, we're going to discuss self-care and creating a self-care ritual with Stephanie. And that's super fun. Stephanie um, has, a, has a lot. She has an intense self-care ritual for the mornings. And I can't, I'm, I don't have two hours to spare. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit with her about how to simplify that a little bit for those of us that don't have that sort of time. And then Liz will be on at 1015. And Liz is going to talk to us about skincare in our kitchen. So I've used um, Liz's products for, for a couple of years now. And I mean, they're just magical. And she says you can make everything right from your own kitchen. So definitely tune into that. And then at 1045, we have intentional candle painting with Madeline Adler. And so this is super fun. And it's something that you can do at home and on your own. And then we're going to close out the evening again with Stephanie. And part of her self-care ritual is masturbation. So we're going to dig in a little deeper with that and what that means and how we can benefit from masturbation for self-care. So I'm super excited you're here. I I am thrilled to be able to, to, to do this. I have had some of the most amazing conversations with some of the witchiest people um, the last few weeks. And as the Witchy Mamas community grows, I cannot wait to offer you so much more and, you know, have some amazing content. So say hi, pop in the chat, um, follow us on Instagram. So we're Witchy Mamas podcast or, or uh, Billy Corinne. So definitely follow us. Go check out the Witchy Mamas website. Put in your name and email address. Get on that mailing list so you don't miss a thing. We've got some really fun projects coming up. Definitely go subscribe to the podcast. It's available everywhere. Um, we've got some new content coming out on that. So go pour your favorite drink. Sit down. Um, get ready for some some fun. Some um, Learn a few things. Listen to some great music. And let's just have a blast today.